MH370 disappeared nine years ago. The Malaysia Airlines passenger plane and all 239 people on board never seen again. In the annals of aviation history, one enigma continues to defy explanation. On March 8, 2014, Malaysian Flight 370 vanished into thin air, leaving behind a bewildered global community and countless unanswered questions. A decade later, something unprecedented has emerged, clues that could rewrite the narrative of one of aviation's greatest puzzles. But what are the forces that conspired to conceal the truth for 10 long years? Could these revelations finally shed light on the fate of the vanished aircraft and its 239 passengers? Join us on an intriguing quest to unveil the truth about Malaysian Flight 370, which vanished a decade ago, and explore the new revelation that has emerged. The unfortunate flight, often called MH370, was a planned international passenger trip run by Malaysian Airlines. It was heading to Beijing, China, an exciting destination that thrilled the minds of more than 200 passengers on the plane. Among them were 227 people from 14 different countries, forming a diverse and multicultural group, along with 12 Malaysian crew members. Departing from Kuala Lumpur International Airport in Malaysia's bustling capital city on the 8th of March, 2014, the flight's mission seemed routine as it embarked on its approximately five, 570-kilometer journey. The aircraft in charge of this voyage was the state-of-the-art Boeing 777, 200 ER, an esteemed member of the Boeing 777 series known for its impressive safety record and advanced technology. Loved and respected by passengers and crews worldwide, this aircraft was a reliable long-haul workhorse for many airlines. As the plane ascended into the night sky, everything appeared to be proceeding as usual. The Boeing 777 gracefully climbed to its cruising altitude, gliding through the clouds with ease. Passengers found comfort in their seats, some resting for a nap, others engaged in entertainment like movies or music. However, at 1.19 Malaysian Standard Time, a seemingly routine handover from Kuala Lumpur Air Traffic Control to Ho Chi Minh City Air Traffic Control in Vietnam was anticipated to occur. Unfortunately, this is where things took an eerie turn. The last verbal communication from the flight came when either the captain or the first officer conveyed the standard phrase, Good night, Malaysian 370. Little did anyone know that these seemingly ordinary words would soon become haunting, as they marked the last known communication from MH370. From that moment on, the fate of the plane became shrouded in mystery. Despite extensive search efforts and investigations, the aircraft, its passengers, and its crew seemingly vanished without a trace. The disappearance of the aircraft sparked global interest and concern, prompting widespread speculation and a desperate quest for answers that continues to this day. But how did MH370 become a phantom in the night sky, leaving aviation investigators puzzled for years? As we previously discussed, the aircraft was a scheduled flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing on March 8, 2014, carrying 239 passengers. The Boeing 777-200ER, equipped with state-of-the-art technology, was captained by Zahiri Hakman Shah, Alongside First Officer Farek Abdul Hamid, both seasoned professionals committed to ensuring a safe journey. At approximately 10.01 a.m. Malaysian Standard Time, while cruising at an altitude of 35,000 feet, the aircraft's aircraft communications addressing and reporting system transmitted a regular data report, indicating smooth operations with no signs of trouble. All seemed routine until 1.07 a.m., when the ACARS sent its final transmission leaving investigators without any clue of what lay ahead. Around 1.19 a.m., as the aircraft was transitioning between Malaysian and Vietnamese airspace, a seemingly routine radio communication occurred. The cockpit's voice communicated a simple phrase, Good night, Malaysia 370, as a customary handover from Kuala Lumpur ATC to Ho Chi Minh City ATC. Little did they know that this would be the last contact with MH370. Just two minutes later, at 1.21 a.m., the aircraft's transponder, 
essential for providing ground radar with vital information on the aircraft's position, speed, and altitude, abruptly ceased to transmit. It vanished from secondary radar, becoming invisible to the usual tracking systems. The only trace left was on primary radar, offering only a rough estimate of its position and altitude. Efforts to establish contact by Ho Chi Minh City ATC, starting at 1.30 a.m., were met with radio silence, adding to the growing uncertainty. At 8.19 a.m., the plane briefly reached out one last time, sending a login request to the Inmarsat satellite, an eerie digital heartbeat before disappearing into the void. These haunting final minutes witnessed routine procedures suddenly interrupted by an ominous silence, leaving aviation investigators puzzled for years. The aircraft had become a phantom in the night sky, with only fragmented digital clues scattered along its enigmatic path, making it one of the most perplexing mysteries in aviation history. The disappearance of the MH370 aircraft raised significant concerns about non-verbal communication systems in aviation. These advanced planes transmit continuous data to ground control, akin to a digital health report. While verbal communication between the aircraft and ground control ceased hours before the incident, the last automated communication, a final handshake with the Inmarsat satellite, occurred at 0819 MYT, further puzzling investigators. When the plane vanished from radar screens and its transponder fell silent, it left behind an enigmatic void that gripped the world's attention. Despite extensive search efforts spanning many years and covering vast stretches of the Indian Ocean, the plane's final resting place remains undiscovered. The few pieces of debris confirmed to be from MH370 turned up thousands of miles away, adding more questions than answers and deepening the mystery. The initial 24-hour search around the aircraft's last known location in the South China Sea quickly escalated into an unprecedented international effort involving 26 countries. They pooled their resources, including ships, aircraft, submarines, manpower, and advanced technologies, to cover a search area of approximately 1.7 million square miles, comparable to the size of Australia. This daunting task was akin to finding a needle in an ever-moving haystack in the middle of the night. To address this immense challenge, Search teams utilized satellite data, aircraft performance data, and advanced technology to narrow down the search area. Eventually, a curved line in the southern Indian Ocean represented the most probable location where the aircraft might have ended its flight. Among the primary tools employed was the towed pinger locator device, designed to detect signals from the aircraft's flight data and cockpit voice recorders, commonly known as black boxes. The clock was ticking, as the black box's battery life was limited to approximately 30 days. When the acoustic pings from the black box went silent, the search operation shifted gears, deploying autonomous underwater vehicles and vessels equipped with advanced sonar and imaging technologies to scan the ocean floor in a previously uncharted section. Although the main body of the aircraft remained elusive, the search led to the discovery of two shipwrecks, providing valuable insights into maritime history. The search for the MH370 extended beyond official efforts, with private and crowd-funded initiatives leveraging satellite imaging to engage the public in scouring images for aircraft debris. Despite these extensive and Herculean efforts, the main wreckage of the aircraft remained undiscovered as of the knowledge cutoff in September 2021. Nonetheless, the quest for MH370 continues marked by human resilience, international collaboration, and an unwavering determination to solve one of aviation's greatest mysteries. Could MH370 have been a victim of cyber hijacking, with a hostile entity remotely hacking or taking control of the plane using sophisticated methods to manipulate satellite data, jam radar signals, or exploit vulnerabilities in the aircraft's systems? The mystery surrounding the disappearance of the aircraft remains a subject of intense investigation, with various theories proposed by investigators to shed light on the root cause. One particularly intriguing and controversial theory centers around the pilot, Zahari Ahmad Shah. According to this theory, he deliberately diverted the plane from its intended course and flew it to a remote location, possibly for personal or political reasons. 
Although this hypothesis is supported by some evidence, it also faces significant challenges. The pilot hijacking theory hinges on the notion that he was the sole person with control over the plane's systems and movements. It is alleged that he intentionally switched off communication and tracking devices to change the flight path, ultimately leading to the plane's tragic crash into the southern Indian Ocean. Some key pieces of evidence that have been put forth to support this theory include the discovery of a flight simulator in his home, which had a route similar to MH370's path, including landing at a remote island in the Indian Ocean. This finding suggests that he may have planned and practiced the diversion beforehand, indicating a specific destination in mind. Additionally, the lack of communication or distress signals from the cockpit further fuels suspicions. The absence of conclusive messages, with only the cryptic words, Goodnight Malaysian 370 inches being the last heard from the cockpit, has led some to interpret this as a possible farewell message from Zahari. Furthermore, military and satellite data recorded erratic flight path and altitude changes, hinting at an attempt to evade radar coverage or confuse air traffic controllers. The fact that the plane made several manual turns, rather than following a pre-programmed route, further adds to the complexity of the unfolding scenario. One critical aspect contributing to the pilot hijacking theory is the possible motive or state of mind of the pilot. Reports suggest that he was facing marital problems, political dissatisfaction, and mental health issues. Speculation suggests that he might have been depressed, suicidal, or radicalized, with a desire to make a dramatic statement or end his life in a way that would impact the world. However, despite these compelling points, the pilot hijacking theory faces significant criticism and challenges. Firstly, there is a lack of conclusive evidence or a clear motive that would drive him to undertake such a drastic act. Family and friends have denied any signs of mental instability or radicalization in his behavior, describing him as a respected and professional pilot with no history of unusual conduct. Moreover, executing such a complex and covert operation presents immense difficulty and risk. Bypassing security systems, locking out a co-pilot, avoiding detection by military or civilian authorities, managing fuel consumption, and ensuring a traceless crash in a remote area requires precise planning and execution. Alternative explanations for the plane's disappearance also exist such as fire or electrical failure, depressurization or hypoxia events, cyber hijacking, or even a shootdown. These theories offer plausible scenarios without implicating Zahari. In an even more unsettling theory, some have speculated that MH370 fell victim to cyber hijacking. This theory proposes that a hostile entity, be it terrorists, rogue states, or the military, remotely hacked or took control of the plane using sophisticated methods to manipulate satellite data, jam radar signals, or exploit vulnerabilities in the aircraft systems. The motives behind such an act could range from terrorist attacks to political diversions or military experiments. The plausibility and feasibility of hacking a plane and taking control of its systems have been subjects of discussion among experts. Some researchers have claimed to have accomplished such feats raising concerns within the aviation industry. For instance, Chris Roberts, a cybersecurity researcher, asserted that he successfully hacked into an airplane's entertainment system and briefly took control of one of its engines in 2015. His intention was to shed light on the vulnerabilities in the aviation sector and caution against potential dangers. In another instance, Hugo Tesso, a former commercial pilot and security consultant, showed how he could control an airplane from afar using an Android app and a radio transmitter. He aimed to expose problems in the plane's communication and software. Some experts doubt his claims, saying it's not so simple to hack into planes with just an app. There are protections in place to prevent such attacks. But other experts warn that there are real risks in aviation security that need more research and rules. They say cyber attacks on planes might increase and get more advanced in the future. Being ready to handle these threats is crucial. Presenting an alternate theory to explain the disappearance of the aircraft, some intriguing claims have also emerged suggesting that the plane may have been unintentionally or deliberately shot down by a missile or a fighter jet. 
This notion has been put forth as a result of various factors, including potential military exercises gone awry, mistaken identity, or an elaborate cover-up operation. One perspective suggests that the aircraft might have been shot down during a joint Thai-U.S. military training exercise in the South China Sea, which coincided with the plane's disappearance. This scenario could have arisen from miscommunication, technical malfunctions, or human error. Notably, a former French airline director, Marc Tegain, even reported having seen satellite images of unidentified aircraft in the vicinity at the time of the incident, and claimed to have received threats from anonymous sources, urging him not to pursue this theory further. Another line of thought proposes that the plane could have been mistakenly targeted by a state actor, perceiving it as a hostile or suspicious aircraft. Deviations from its original course, loss of communication, or resemblance to another plane might have contributed to this tragic misunderstanding. According to British author Nigel Cawthorn, some believe that U.S. TIE fighters, fearing the plane was headed for their military base on Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean, shot it down. He also contended that the aircraft's cargo may have contained sensitive materials or personnel that could have aroused attention or hostility. Furthermore, some allege the possibility of a cover-up operation, suggesting that the plane was deliberately targeted by a state actor seeking to conceal their involvement or responsibility. Potential motives for such a cover-up could be political or strategic, aiming to divert attention, provoke or implicate another country, or secure valuable items from the plane. A French relative of some passengers, Giselena Watrolu, even speculated that the aircraft was downed by the U.S. Air Force to seize electronic equipment bound for China, implicating an international conspiracy to suppress the truth. However, it is essential to acknowledge that the shoot-down theory encounters numerous challenges and criticisms. Key among these is the lack of conclusive evidence or motive for such an action. To date, no verified information confirms the presence of any missile or fighter jet in the vicinity of the plane, nor has any state actor demonstrated a plausible reason or intention to shoot down the aircraft. Additionally, claims based on satellite images and anonymous threats lack official corroboration. Moreover, the notion of shooting down a civilian plane and orchestrating a cover-up poses significant difficulties and risks. Such an act would necessitate a high level of coordination and authorization, carrying severe legal and diplomatic consequences. Maintaining a complex conspiracy involving multiple countries and agencies without any leaks or whistleblowers would present a substantial challenge. British aeronautical engineer Richard Godfrey claims to have made a significant advancement in the investigation of MH370's disappearance. Using revolutionary aviation tracking technology and integrated data sets, he identified the plane's crash site in the Indian Ocean. Godfrey's sophisticated software, weak signal propagation reporter network, tracks aircraft movements globally with radio signals, offering more reliable data than traditional radar. He reconstructed MH370's flight path and cross-referenced it with various sources to pinpoint the crash location, about 1,933 kilometers west of Perth, Australia. According to his calculations, the plane crashed at high speed and a steep angle, breaking into pieces and sinking to about 4,000 meters deep. While Godfrey's findings offer hope for answers and closure for grieving families, some experts question his methods and call for independent verification of his theories. In September 2019, as the perplexing fate of the aircraft continued to baffle investigators, most of the search efforts had focused on the vast ocean, but a British video producer, Ian Wilson, entertained a different theory during his spare time. He speculated that the missing Boeing 777 might have crashed on land in a remote jungle, making it exceedingly difficult to locate. Delving into satellite maps of potential flight paths, Ian scrutinized the rainforests of Southeast Asia. After days of scrolling, he stumbled upon something remarkable, an object resembling an airplane deep in the Cambodian jungle, about 60 miles west of Phnom Penh. The images showed the plane seemingly wedged against a mountain at an angle of approximately 45 degrees. Despite other airplane pieces washing ashore in the Indian Ocean, only a few could be definitively linked to MH370. 
Skepticism persisted regarding the theory of the plane crashing into the ocean, given the various possible directions it could have taken. This uncertainty led Ian and his brother Jackie to pool their resources and journey to the Cambodian jungle in pursuit of their discovery. Their expedition faced unexpected challenges, with local guides eventually turning back due to treacherous terrain, including a daunting waterfall. Nevertheless, the brothers remained steadfast in their belief that their findings aligned with the plane's last known position on its flight path. Aviation expert Lieutenant Tim McMillan analyzed the satellite images and opined that the object did resemble an airplane stranded in the wilderness. However, based on the scale of the image, it appeared too small to be a Boeing 777. Ultimately, the experts determined that the sighting was not MH370, but rather a different plane caught by chance during the satellite imagery. Despite the outcome, Ian and Jackie maintain their conviction and plan to undertake another expedition once they gather sufficient funds. While advancements in aviation tracking technology offer hope for answers, independent verification is essential to validate these findings. Despite the passion and determination of investigators and amateur sleuths alike, the truth about MH370's disappearance remains elusive, leaving grieving families and the world in search of closure and understanding. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more quality content.